It's your boy Nungun in the house, back with another bang on video. Well, ladies and gentlemen, before I start the video, I'd really like to, you know, congratulate uh, and uh, I'd really like to give a shout out to Gorang Singh, one of the subscribers of this channel, who was actually affected with COVID-19, and he was. Uh, I just recently came to know via comments uh, and, you know, contacting with him that uh, he had this COVID-19 and he was under quarantine. I mean, um, uh, I just wish you you you, you, you are blessed with uh, a good health, my friend. And I hope you carry on with this. And uh, I hope I hope you beat all other diseases because this guy has been asymptomatic. He has beaten the disease. So congratulations on that, Gorang Singh. And may you and all the subscribers on this channel live happily ever after and be healthy no matter what. So if you guys also are, uh, you know, affected by COVID-19 and have actually come back from it, and if you fought, let me know your stories in the comment section if you guys can. Wherever you can comment, let me know. I always check all the comments of my subscribers in, in order so that I can I can actually connect with them. That's what I always love to do on my platform. Well, starting with the news, the first news that's coming our way, well, the biggest one, Kieran Jenny has spoken about on his return to the Premier League. He said, I felt good. I felt as fit as I could be this time. Matches are going to get me match fit and I've done all I could possible to get fit for a match. The managers trusted me, put me in and I'm very grateful. It's been a long six months and a hard six months. Financial fair play rules have been suspended across European football to ease the strain on clubs facing huge losses after COVID-19. UEFA has announced FFP break-even assessments for 2020 will be postponed for 12 months. So the clubs can actually spend whatever they can, you know, make all the contract arrangements, whatever they can, and actually try to make, try to stabilize the clubs, you know, going forward. Well, moving on, Mino Raiola has a mandate from Roma to work on a Mkhitaryan Cliver exchange deal. For now, there is no agreement for Mkhitaryan to join Roma because Arsenal want a straight swap with Clivert, whereas Roma would like 20 million euros in addition to Mkhitaryan for Justin Clivert. Well, just as the Premier League started the first game itself, it was a bigger blunder. This time, not VAR, but Hawkeye Innovations. But the match officials did not receive a signal to the ma to the watch nor earpiece as per the goal decision system protocol. The seven cameras located in the stands around the goal area were significantly occluded by the goalkeeper, defender and goal post. This level of, of occlusion has never been seen before in over 9,000 matches that the Hawkeye goal line technology system has been in operation. So one small mistake and Sheffield United are, de are denied two points. If they, if that is the whole reason why they are, they have been denied a European spot, I think the whole system is to be blamed, and it, it needs to it, it needs to undergo serious scrutiny. Well, James Penge is open about uh, David Luiz and uh, Mesut Ozil. He says as David Luiz and Mesut Ozil very publicly get their point across around about their Arsenal status, Mikel Arteta is left alone to explain situations where we know he doesn't necessarily agree with the course of action. Meanwhile, Raul Sanyehi means, uh, remains silent. Well, obviously in this situation, Raul is silent, but we don't know what's going to happen because all in all, I believe that every every single one of them is definitely going to go under the knife. This squad needs to be butchered. I mean, it needs to be cut you know, molded across exactly how Arteta wants it, exactly how Arsenal fans wants it, want it. So let's see how that will turn out for us. But moving on, Arteta on Mesut says a lot has happened uh, to him in the last few weeks, and I have res to respect the timing of every player that needs sometimes a little bit of time. I am the first one that wants Mesut at his best, and I will put him in the pitch when I think he can give his best. Well, uh, probably this is not the first time even Unai Emery used to, you know, freeze him out or probably say him away. All the Arsenal fans were against Emery then. I really want to see what they have to say about Arteta now. Well, moving on, Arteta finished up press conference and he says no issues with Ozo. And uh, he says uh, he was very well with me. There were no issues at all. My conversation with Mesut will remain between me and him. What I can tell you is that it was a complete, fine, honest and clear conversation. That's it. That's exactly the only thing that we should know also because it's been a, a roller coaster ride of the selections in terms of how the fans reacted after the game against City. But I think, did we have any other option to actually think more on that game or were we expecting too much too soon? We'll move it on. Mikel Arteta has spoken about David Luiz, his future. He says, I don't know. I told you when I was talking last night, that he's very open, he's a man, a leader, and I was sure that he was going to speak in front of everybody. You heard what he said. He was very direct with us, too. And talking about transfers, now Mikel Arteta has opened up about, about it a lot. He says, our position at the moment is that we have to see and be cautious. 
our ambition is still intact and i know from the owners that their ambition is still intact as well we will try and do our best to improve the squad maintain the players we want to maintain and move forward well i hope i hope uh, i re- i'm really excited about how exactly arsenal are going to line up next season and probably in the next games because you know the whole center back situation has i think we are cursed with certain things because the injuries that are happening we are marred with injuries now yeah? but moving on well michael arda has spoken about david david luiz's departure would be business or personal he says we cannot forget the financial situation the way covid-19 has hit every club and the economy is in general what the club is doing at the moment is assessing the situation and trying to clarify a lot of uncertainties and uh, talking about luis he went on saying that's what i value from him that's what i like from him but we need to f- be fair on him me personally i'm going to defend him with everything i have because i believe in him he's shown me a lot of things in his time here and his career speaks for itself Well Rob Holding is set for a recall in Arsenal's starting 11 against Brighton. Pablo Mari looks set to miss the rest of the season after a bad ankle injury against Manchester City. It's not official yet, but the injury looks really bad. And David Luiz is also unavailable after uh, you know being shown a straight red card. He will be un- unavailable for the next two games uh, for Arsenal and the Athletic claims Holding is now set to get a straight chance aside alongside Squadron Mustafi as Arsenal go in search of a win against the Seagulls this weekend and Grant Shaka supposedly suffered an uh, ankle problem against Manchester City Arsenal saw was subbed off just minutes into Wednesday's 3-0 defeat at the Etihad the Athletic reckons Shaka will need some time off to recover from the setback but he is expected to return before the end of the season so it's not something he's serious involving granite shaka chelsea and arsenal look set to miss out on a move for lille star gabriel well is uh, it has been claimed that napoli have agreed a 20 million pound deal with the french club for their brazilian center back chelsea were understood to be keeping close tabs on gabriel magalhaes after his brilliant league one season but both the blues and the arsenal appear to have lost out to napoli although the coppa italia champions are yet to strike personal terms with gabriel but moving on Kai Havertz has fueled transfer speculation as he appeared to like a tweet demanding Chelsea to sign him. The Bayer Leverkusen star is believed to be a big money f- target for Frank Lampard and a move could be on after Havertz liked a tweet in the wake of Timo Werner's signing demanding Chelsea also splash out on him too. Manchester United are also thought to be extremely keen on the German playmaker. Arsenal were linked with a move for Havertz in April but are unlikely to have the funds required to complete a deal for the youngster. Fikayo Tomori is Chelsea's most valuable English academy star putting headline grabbers Callum Hudson-Odoi, Mason Mount and Tammy Abraham in the shade. Well, at Arsenal, Ainsley Maitland-Niles is a more valuable asset than fellow homegrown talents Bukayo Saka and Reese Nelson. Meanwhile, at Manchester United, a slightly more predictable result reveals that Marcus Rashford outdoes outdoes, I'm sorry, outdoes Jesse Lingard, Brandon Williams and Mason Greenwood. But also, Carteret Analytics um uh, teamed up with Sun Sport, a London-based investment company who work closely with football clubs around the world. The detailed an- analytics which are used by numerous clubs as part of their recruitment process finds the intrinsic value of a player, the monetary value of their contribution to increasing the probability of winning the games for the respective clubs. Angel Gomez, Manchester United's future is still up in the air with just Two weeks in to go until his contract runs out. Chelsea are believed to be strong to suitors of for the whisky and Arsenal were linked to the move last month. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer admits he doesn't know if Gomez will stay at Old Trafford. Well, Solskjaer wants the youngster to stay but will not stop him should he opt to leave. He said with Angel, he's the top kid we've had at the club so for so many years we've offered him a deal and hopefully he'll take that. And if not, I wish him all the best. From what I understand, it's not too far away but If not, we'll wish him all the best in the world. Also, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is considering a move for Roma sensation and Arsenal target Cengiz Undaya. Well, because uh, he may turn his attention for, to the Turkish 22-year-old forward who would be available for a reportedly £30 million, pounds, a fraction of the price of Sancho and or Federico Chiesa. Well, negotiations could also help by using Chris Smalling, currently on loan with Roma as a make-weight in the deal. However, Arsenal have Mkhitaryan at Roma and could be also in a similar strong bargaining position from the club. John Barnes has opened up about Aubameyang's situation is exactly like Mesut Ozil's. He has questioned the commitment of Arsenal captain Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. 
Well, he said the only person who's worth that kind of money and being the highest paid player is a player who is 100% committed to the club, not a player who, if things aren't going well, he wants to leave and then hold the club to ransom. First of all, the most important thing, regardless of money or contracts, is uh, does he want to be at Arsenal? And then, if the club feel that he's fully committed, regardless of whether they're a mid-table team or in the top one or two, then he's worth that. But that is a question mark. It was the same thing with Ozil. Had Ozil been that committed to Arsenal in terms of warranting that than that of salary? We know he has the ability, but it may not turn out that way. So it's a question of Arsenal knowing or feeling that he is committed to the football club. Well, these were the news of the day. I hope you enjoyed whatever came your way. All the views and news and everything about Arsenal comes on this platform every single day twice. So sit back, relax and enjoy all the news that comes on this platform every single day. I will see you in my next video. Until then, cheers. And don't forget to subscribe. We are on a mission of reaching 5,000 subscribers as soon as possible.